What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode. Hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and share the video. Hit the join button and become a member. Why? Well, members get exclusive content. Hit the bell icon on my channel so that you'll receive a notification every time that I drop a video and you can go and check the video out. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please do so. Subscribe to the Inside Story with me, Damian Porter, as we always go inside the story. There's normally a story inside of the story. And we try to go in there and dig deep and dig it out. Let's get into this story, and it takes us to YTS, Youth Training, uh, where I did time at. I paroled in January of 1994. And I was on KNL and Heavy D from Grape Street. Watch Crip was on CND. Heavy D got that name because probably because he resembled Heavy D physically. The rapper Heavy D who passed away. He resembled him. Uh, in fact, Heavy D, this Heavy D, was a bit bigger than Heavy D. But everyone in YTS liked Heavy D from Grape Street Watch. He had a lot of juice with all of the police. He was selling cigarettes in there. Cigarettes were illegal in YTS. And it was the currency. If you had tobacco, if you had cigarettes, were selling cigarettes, you can make a lot of money. The police was making a lot of money bringing the tobacco in. They was bringing it to the homie Baby Doom from 11 Dudes Who. He had it sold up on our side. He was on Eminem. I was on k &L. Heavy D had it sold up on the other side of YTS. The other side of the yard, if you will. C and D, A and B, etc. And everyone liked Heavy D. He was big and somewhat cuddly. People even referred to him as a teddy bear. Hell, I've even been called a teddy bear before. <laughs> All right now. And Heavy D got along with everyone, always had a smile on his face and a positive word to convey to you. And this is why people took an affinity to Heavy D, always in a good mood and didn't appear to have any violent tendencies whatsoever. And he was making a lot of money selling cartons and packs of cigarettes. He would sell you the carton, you can break it down and then sell single cigarettes. He'd get a police there cut. He began to have dealings with a dude from Pablo's. I cannot recall his name. I was thinking all morning of the dude's name. I don't remember. But he was on CND with Heavy D. And the dude from Pablo's uh, everything that I saw about him, he seemed like a stand-up and strong dude. He was light-skinned, had little curly hair. Uh, he was mixed or something. Tattoos, but he seemed like a, a, a stand-up individual. But you don't know someone until you know them. Heavy D began to deal with him and give him cartons of cigarettes and let him sell it and bring him back the money. But Heavy D had this going on with a few people on the yard or in YTS because he had so much coming in. Heavy D had everything in his cell that you can imagine. He even had a VCR at one point and he used to be in there watching nasty movies. And he would pass it around to some of his homies and let them watch some of this stuff sometimes. And everything was okay there on CND. One day, the police hit the dude from Pablo's cell. Now, the dude from Pablo's had been getting into it with the police for a few weeks. He had an infatuation with one of the women that was there. One of the staff members that worked at YTS. And at first, I believe they did have something going, but eventually she cut it off. Told him, there can be no more. Well, 
it was too much for him to bear. He can he continued to go at the woman, sending her letters, kites. Essentially, it seemed, as far as she was concerned, harassing her. So, the police had had enough and wanted to send a message to Pablo. You have to stop. We understand you may have had something going with her before. The police even knew what was going on. But it's over now. She doesn't want anything else to do with you. Let it go. He apparently could not, and the police hit his cell so as to send a message. And when they hit his cell, they ransacked his cell. Now, typically in YTS, the police do not search your cell. They come in every day at about 3 o'clock. You step out, they go inside and hit the back window. They used to always just hit the back window a couple of times, I guess to make sure that you were not trying to escape. You were not, you know, working on the back window to get it open at some point and then run up out of there because you can get out of the back window. But that was all the searching that they were involved in for the most part there in YTS. So for them to hit his cell, search his cell and ransack it, well, that lets me know and let him know that they were indeed sending a message that this shit must stop immediately. After the police ransacked his cell, he later told Heavy D that the police took the cartons of cigarettes. By now, Heavy D had began to invest in him and give him more and more and more. I brought you stories like that even recently, where once you're dealing with someone, they tend to increase what it is that they're giving you because now they're trusting you. And then you end up stabbing them in the back. I don't know the, all of the particulars with this situation. I was on KNL. But I do know that Heavy D said, well, this is asinine. Po Heavy D talked to the police that hit his cell. The police that hit Peplo's cell happened to be one of the police that was bringing in the cigarettes for Heavy D. The police saw the cigarettes there. He knew that he had been bringing them to Heavy D and that Heavy D deals with it. a lot of people in the unit and had been dealing with Peplo's and that more than likely this was Heavy D's tobacco, meaning it was also a police officer's tobacco. This was his money. He left the tobacco, the cartons of cigarettes, right there. He never touched none of them. No other police did either. This is what the police are telling Heavy D. No, sir, we did not touch the tobacco. We know that it was yours. Hell, I'm the one who brought it in for you. Why would I do that? We just wanted to send him a message to leave her alone. We took some other stuff, but no contraband. Like they took his TV and stuff that was legal, stuff that he was allowed to have. Again, just to irritate and aggravate him and send him a message. But they left the contraband, according to the police. They did not touch the tobacco. Heavy D, well, he's up in arms now. Feeling like this dude is trying to play him. Heavy D took that information to Pablo's. He first let the watch car know what was going on that this dude was playing him for a fool. The watch car had his back when he went to Peblo's and told him what the police had conveyed to him. That your propensity to be mendacious is astounding. You're lying. The police did not touch nan cigarette inside of your cell. I need my money and I want my money and I want it now, or give me back my tobacco. Peblos insisted that the police had ransacked his cell and taken the tobacco, along with some other stuff he said that he had in there that was contraband. He said they took all of it. But again, the police was telling Heavy D this was far from the truth. Heavy D surprised everyone by saying, he needed to squabble Peblos and squabble him immediately. Now, this was, this was indeed a surprise. Not because I thought Heavy D was soft, big, and cuddly, but because he didn't seem to have a violent bone in his body. 
he just seemed so cool with everyone. And he was. However, I was beginning to learn even then that every man and woman has their breaking point. Everyone has boundaries, certain standards that you cannot cross. Peblos had crossed the line, lying to his face and essentially saying that he had no money for him, that you're going to have to accept what I'm telling you. The police took the tobacco, bro. The police set up the fight, said that they can squabble up in the day room. Everyone knows what's going on. Everyone. The heavy leading gave Peblos some tobacco and that Peblos more than likely still has it. And it's not trying to pay. The police and YTS, again, I've already brought you situations where they let people fight. And so they let them go inside of the day room, during day room. Everyone is there. They move the chairs out the way. Again, Heavy D is a humongous human being. Pat Lowe's is not small in stature, but he's nowhere near the size of Heavy D. Now, I've heard people say all of my life, the bigger you are, the harder you fall. But I believe the harder, the bigger you are, the harder it is to make you fall. And people say that size does not matter. But I disagree. If it's a fight between Shaquille O'Neal and Kevin Hart, I'm taking Shaq every time. I'm sorry. I'm going to take my chances with, take, with putting my money on Shaq Diesel. Not Kevin Hart. So size does matter. And Heavy D has a lot of it. But Peblos... He's no coward. And so he said, okay, fine. If you want to squabble over this, that's fine. I'm telling you, I don't have the stuff. The Damus did not get involved. The, other, the, the rest of the watch card did not get involved. That was between them two. It was personal. And it was not about to be a melee over that situation. They, everyone was just going to allow them to hash it out. They entered the day room. And everyone got out of the way. Heavy D threw up his dukes, from my understanding. I wasn't there. But it was confirmed by everyone what happened. <laughs> everyone was talking about it the next day. And for days and weeks thereafter. Heavy D came inside of the day room with a tank top on. Ill-fitting. And some shorts on. He was ready for a squat. And he came inside of the day and he threw his dukes up and said, let's do it. Peblos, he threw his dukes up and Heavy D, he rushed towards him. But he was moving kind of slow from everyone's estimation. And Peblos swung first before Heavy D, big ass, could even get a swing off. And he hit Heavy D about the face area. Now, this only angered Heavy as he approached even more rapidly now and got his hands on a dude from Pablo's and embraced him in somewhat of a bear hug, put him in a full Nelson. He had been watching the WWF and had learned a few moves. And he knew how to use his uh, considerable weight against a smaller opponent. And he wrapped his hands around Pablo's and slammed him to the ground. And when he slammed him to the ground, that dazed Peblo some. And then Heavy D got up, breathing hard already. Got on top of Peblo's and began to pummel him somewhat about the face area. Heavy D sort of came to and got up off of him. Because now the bloods, they did begin to circle a little bit because Heavy D had apparently blacked out and was going kind of far. Again, this is someone who you, who you do not expect violence from. Trust me. Not because you're underestimating him. He just did not give off the violent type. But again, every man has a breaking point. 
and he had apparently reached his. As the bloods began to circle, so did the Crips. And but it all came to a screeching halt. Heavy D's homies grabbed him, grabbed him up off, uh, and got him up off of Peblos. Peblos was leaking; his face was leaking. Again, he was uh, light skinned so you can see all of the bruises on his face. His eye was already beginning to close. But no one got involved in the fight. They let them hash it out as grown men. From my understanding, Heavy D never got his tobacco back. He never wanted it back after that point. He felt like they were even. And I don't know what happened after that. I don't know if Peblos was ever found out to have really had the tobacco for sure or not. He swears to because he wasn't about to go around selling the cigarettes after that. Every, everybody going to know that he that you lied, that you indeed did have them. So he probably had to flush them or give them to somebody else to sell, smoke them, whatever he did, if he really had them. Heavy D, I don't know. I wasn't there. Heavy D is convinced that Peblos had the tobacco, that he did not lose it in the search. I don't think he's just going off, merely going off of the police word, but maybe he is. He does have juice with the police. He may believe what they're telling him because they're the ones bringing it in for him. He has all kind of stuff going on in there. So he's taking their word that they did not go in there and take his product. And Peblos is, again, continuing to say that they did indeed take it. He has nothing. And all hell broke loose. Heavy D didn't believe him. So he sort of pummeled Peblos. He, he got the best of them, bro. He's a big dude. He sat on top. He wrestled them to the ground and then sat on top of them, breathing hard and was swinging slow. But I'm sure they were powerful and heavy hits, powerful punches. And the dude, was, he was leaking, bro. Pretty bad. But no one felt bad for him because everyone had love for Heavy D and it felt like Peblos was trying to take his kindness for weakness. And that whatever happened, he had it coming. I don't know. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments. Was Heavy D right? Taking the police's word that the dude still had the tobacco? Or should he have took Pablo's word that the police took it? You know that they searched myself. They took it. And left it like that? I don't know. What do y'all think? Let me know. And I'll be back. And in the meantime. Stay free, people!